हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स बिगिन न्यू चैप्टर टुडे मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सॉलिड्स अंटिल नाउ वी हैव सीन दैट द बॉडीज वर रिजिड व्हेन वी वर अप्लाइंग फोर्स दैट फोर्स वाज हेल्पिंग इन इट्स मोशन वी सॉ लीनियर मोशन सर्कुलर मोशन रोटेशनल मोशन ओके बट अंटिल नाउ वी हैव नॉट सीन व्हाट हैपेंस इफ वी अप्लाई फोर्स एंड दैट बॉडी बेंड्स और चेंजेस इट्स शेप और साइज ओके in this uh, chapter onwards we are uh, uh, going to study deformable bodies okay non rigid bodies first of all let me explain what is a rigid body the body whose shape and size shape and size does not change does not change on application of force on application of force okay let's say uh, this body is uh, being applied f force from here f force from here we simply said that Uh, there are equal and opposite forces so there will be no displacement of the body we did not consider that uh, when equal and opposite forces are applied it may even break or or bend or damage get damaged okay so until now we were considering this body as rigid body okay we simply said this body is under equilibrium this body is under equilibrium we did not consider that this body may get damaged okay now uh, this chapter onwards let's see what are uh, def what are deformations at atomic level uh, you, we know that atoms are not uh, immediately connected to each other there is some separation between atoms okay molecular spacing or atomic spacing let's say this is some uh, material whose atoms are arranged like this at some separation which is uh, the separation for their stability at these conditions okay this is molecular spacing we can even uh, study the bigger letters now this is spacing between these uh, molecules or atoms let's say this is one molecule or atom one atom and this is spacing between uh, its atoms okay this is interatomic space interatomic space let me see if it is visible yes so uh, at normal conditions there is some uh, interatomic space if we try to compress this body okay if we will try to compress this body by applying external fro force from outside then interatomic forces will try to push it back okay so what are uh, external deforming force external deforming force forces equal and opposite external forces equal and opposite external forces which try to which try to change the interatomic 
इंटर एटोमिक और इंटर मोलिकुलर स्पेसिंग ऑफ एटम्स ऑफ ए मटीरियल ऑफ ए बॉडी ओके दीज आर एक्सटर्नल डिफॉर्मिंग फोर्सेस ओके वेन एवर वी अप्लाई एक्सटर्नल डिफॉर्मिंग फोर्सेस रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस आर डेवलप्ड ओके लेट सी वॉट आर रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस आर इंटर एटोमिक फोर्सेस विच ट्राई टू अपोज द एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस ओके वेन वी आर अप्लाइंग सम फोर्स ऑन इट एक्सटर्नल फोर्स आई एम अप्लाइंग टू चेंज इट शेप एंड साइज देन इन दीज बॉन्ड्स देर विल बी इंटर एटोमिक यू नो देर आर सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ इंटर एटोमिक फोर्सेज वनरबल फोर्सेज आयनिक बॉन्ड्स कोवलेंट बॉन्ड्स ओके दो फोर्सेज दे विल ट्राई टू prevent its change in this length interatomic spaces these are the forces which oppose external forces these are called restoring forces let's try to understand with better example let's say let's say uh, this was a uh, original structure with this much spacing with this much spacing okay let's say i have applied compressive force on it okay compressive force will try to squeeze it together on app uh, application of compressive forces so what did compressive forces do uh, they have brought them closer the spacing has reduced okay this spacing has reduced if let's say this uh, separation was x then this separation d is less than x why because we have reduced inter atomic spaces by applying compressive forces now since separation has reduced this uh, there will be inter atomic forces and those inter atomic forces will try to bring it back or at x separation x is a uh, separation at stable conditions okay at normal conditions this is separation now since we have compressed it separation has reduced the force which will uh, act here between them will try to push it back okay it will try to push it back so here i can say there will be inter atomic repulsion here there will be inter atomic repulsive restoring force the restoring force will be such that it will repel uh, the molecules okay and uh, if uh, if i try to pull it elongate it then the result will be opposite obviously it will be opposite let's see if i am applying uh, elongated forces elongated forces if uh, i am applying force such that uh the separation between them has increased okay i have elongated this the separation has increased let's say the structure has become something like this here uh the separation is d now and d is greater than x d is 
greater than x. Now uh, we know that uh, this was normal. Uh, this was a stable condition for its. Uh, this was separation for stable condition. Now since they have moved away, atoms want to come back at this. Uh, separation okay since they want to come back they will pull each other towards each other like this okay they will pull each other now I can say that restoring forces are of attractive nature okay so here the restoring forces are uh, attractive interatomic interatomic uh, attractive restoring force in all these atoms there will be interatomic attractive uh, restoring force now uh, as you know that uh, we are talking about two different forces here one uh, which is external force and one which is restoring force okay so there is external force uh, which is trying to compress it or uh, elongate it these are external external compressive forces external elongated forces okay and then there are internal forces interatomic uh, restoring force interatomic restoring force on different different objects we may apply same compressive or uh, elongated force so even if external force is same this result will not be same for example let me give you uh, an example uh, let's say i'm trying uh, let's say i'm applying force on these two markers uh, on this highlighter i'm applying force and uh, on this pen, I am applying force like this. Okay, I'm trying to uh, elongate it. Or since these these two are different material, th this is plastic. This is a uh, a glass. So uh, when I will, this may be more brittle. So this may break suddenly. And this, uh, it, since this is plastic, it will not break suddenly, and it will be able to bend uh, to a, to a lot of extent. Okay, so. Interatomic restoring forces are properties of material. Okay, is it plastic? Is it uh, uh, glass or steel or copper? And these forces, external forces, depend on external agent who is trying to deform them. Now, uh, there is a new term called stress. Stress. Stress is equal to the restoring force. Restoring force upon area. Okay. Uh, it, it is of several types. Uh, types of stress. Types of stress are longitudinal. Volumetric. Volumetric is also called hydraulic. Okay, and third type is shear stress. Shear stress. So, what are these types of stress? It depends on the type of deformation. Okay, type of stress depends on types of uh, deformation. Longitudinal is further of two types compressive elongative compressive elongative similarly volumetric stress is also of two types compressive elongative but we will simply see it here here also it is similar and then there is shear compressive stress is when uh, we are 
compressing this material let's say this is a body of length l area a cross section area a we are compressing it with force f then since we are compressing it uh, it, it is tied to this roof okay there is something tied to this roof and we are compressing it upwards that is called compressive uh, in this case compressive stress is developed elongating stress is when something is tried, uh, tied uh, to uh, uh, on its one end and on the other end we are pulling it okay since this will lead to uh, elongation this case uh, is uh, the stress developed in this case is called uh, elongative longitudinal stress okay next uh, is volumetric or hydraulic stress now in this case what we are doing is we are applying uh, stress on the whole volume okay let's say this is a body of volume v okay and we are applying equal force from all the sides equal force from all the sides on its surface area on its surface area this uh, this force on this whole area force upon area is called a stress now why it is called a hydraulic stress because this this uh, case uh, is possible only for fluids only for liquids liquids can apply equal and uh, a uniform stress on this body okay so here force upon area can also be written as pressure okay here only only in this case i can say stress is equal to force upon area that is also equal to pressure pressure of this fluid okay let's see what is shear stress i have noticed that when i'm writing here it appears a little later so i'm going to explain again on this body if i'm applying force f uniformly everywhere then that force upon area is called uh, volumetric uh, stress or hydraulic stress and since it is possible only for liquids it is also called hydraulic stress or it is also called pressure force upon area is also called pressure shear stress when i am trying to change the shape of the body okay let's say this is the body attached here on this area a this is area a here i am applying tangential force like this tangential force okay tangential force now uh, let me give you an example okay this uh, this was compressive stress like this i am compressing this is elongative stress i am pulling it like this hydraulic stress is pressure if it is placed in liquid the liquid will uh, apply equal force from all the sides that is uh, hydraulic stress okay shear stress is something like this on its surface i am applying tangential force so what happens with the tangential force i am changing the shape okay so it's these these sides does uh, do not remain uh, vertical they become slanted okay so this type of stress which is developed here is called shear stress okay so shear stress is this force upon this area uh, remember this area is considered here the area on which we are applying force very important point to note here is this force external force f is not uh, is not applying stress okay force upon area is not stress this is a restoring force upon area as i said there are two forces here one which is external these forces f and the other which is developed inside it okay 
इनसाइड दिस देर विल बी रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस रिस्टोरिंग फोर्सेस अपॉन एरिया इज कॉल्ड स्ट्रेस ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट मी गिव यू अ प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ एग्जाम्पल वेन देर आर एग्जाम द स्टूडेंट्स फील द स्ट्रेस ऑफ दैट एग्जाम ओके ऑल दो दैट इज नॉट फोर्स अपॉन एरिया बट uh in uh, general terms that is stress of exams that stress is not uh same for all the students although the exam may be same okay let's say there is exam of uh, physics and uh, some of the students are feeling that stress of that exam exam is same for all of them now that exam is external force okay external not 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 the restoring that is external force and their the reaction of students is different because their internal restoring force is different okay some of the students might be uh, already uh, prepared for exam they will feel less restore, less stress and some of them may not be prepared for exam they will feel more stress so external factor exam is not the reason for stress exam is not the reason their own preparation for that exam is the reason for stress okay i hope you can understand exam aane wala hai exam ki wajah se stress nahi hai stress ka kisko hai jiski preparation nahi hai usko stress hai okay similarly external force f is not the reason for stress what is there restoring force of these metals of this material what is their internal force is the reason for stress okay and here stress is uh, is preventing their change in shape and size okay if there is stress it means they will not change their shape or size if there is no stress it means there is no restoring force it will simply elongate or change its shape and size okay for example uh if uh, if it is a steel rod okay let let's say this is uh, this is metallic uh, ring now there is a lot of stress in it i cannot change its shape and size because there are very strong restoring forces inside it however if it was made up of clay then i could easily change its shape or size by applying very less little force why uh because uh, if it is made up of clay then there are very uh, little weak uh, restoring forces okay since restoring forces are uh, are the reason of stress since clay has very weak restoring forces there will be very little stress and then its shape and size will change very easily okay let's see next definition the next definition is strain 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 is change in configuration configuration is shape or size okay change in configuration divided by original configuration original configuration okay the types of strain are also depending on the type of stress for longitudinal uh, stress there is change in length so here strain in these cases strain is equal to in these cases strain is equal to change in length delta l by n okay so this is longitudinal strain okay this is longitudinal strain longitudinal strain can also be compressive longitudinal strain or elongative here delta l the length will decrease delta l uh, inverse and here length will increase so delta l will be downwards okay here there will be elongation here there will be co uh, compression so strain is equal to change in length upon length here uh, since the volume will change the volume uh, will increase or decrease depending on the pressure is out, uh, more outside or inside if the pressure is more outside it will the volume will decrease 
if the pressure is more inside the volume will increase so here strain is equal to in this case strain volumetric strain is equal to change in volume delta v by original volume v okay change in volume upon volume in this case what is strain just give me a second yes it is visible uh, strain is delta v by v here it is delta l by l in this case what is strain when i'm pushing uh, this tangentially its shape will become something like this okay in this direction it will become slanting we saw that case of book in which it was becoming slanting by application of force in this direction its shape was changing uh, this is the angle by which it is bending theta okay this is uh, the horizontal displacement of its surface of upper surface upper surface has displaced delta x in this direction or let's say x in this direction and its height is h its height is h so h height at h height the upper surface has moved x in this direction so here strain is equal to strain is equal to x by h the distance which it has moved in this direction is x and the height at which it has moved x is h so strain is equal to x by h that we also know that uh, if I am considering this theta, then this is length of arc, this is radius. So theta is x by h. x by h can also be written as theta. Okay. So strain is x by h or the angle at which it has shifted. Simply, the angle at which it, uh, it has shifted is called shear strain. Shear strain, volumetric strain and longitudinal strain. For different type of stress, there is a different type of strain. Okay, quickly note down until here. Uh, for different types of stress, there is different type of strain and they are also uh, related with each other. Uh, that is, the relation is given by Hooke's law. The very simple law says that uh, stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is directly proportional to strain. Proportional to strain within within elastic limit of the body limit of the body what is elastic let's see and uh, here he has said stress is directly proportional to strain now strain is directly proportional to stress or stress is directly proportional to strain these are not same things uh, let me explain one first i will apply external force okay first i will apply external force external force is not the reason of stress now uh, when I will apply external force, it will change its interatomic spacing, okay? Which means uh, when I apply uh, external force, the first thing that appears is stress, uh, is strain, okay? Due to that strain, when interatomic spacing changes, there, be, there uh, is a, a development of restoring forces. Okay, due to restoring forces, then stress is developed, okay? When apply external force, first strain is developed and then due to strain, stress is developed. Okay, so I can say stress is directly proportional to strain. Coefficient of uh, this uh, proportionality, constant of this proportionality is E. E is modulus of elasticity. 
मॉडुलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी सिंस देर आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेन देर आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मॉडुलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी वी विल कम बैक टू दैट लेटर फर्स्ट लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज इलास्टिसिटी वेन वी स्ट्रेच इन अवर बैंड इट कम्स बैक टू इट्स ओरिजिनल शेप ओके सो इट वी वी कॉल इट इलास्टिक सो वॉट इज इलास्टिक इलास्टिसिटी इज प्रॉपर्टी इलास्टिसिटी इज प्रॉपर्टी टू रीगेन शेप और साइज शेप एंड साइज आफ्टर रिमूवल ऑफ स्ट्रेस आफ्टर रिमूवल ऑफ स्ट्रेस आफ्टर रिमूवल ऑफ एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस स्ट्रेस स्लैश स्ट्रेस विल बी रिमूव वेन एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस विल बी रिमूव सो लेट्स से देर इज अ रबर बैंड आई एम अप्लाइंग एक्सटर्नल फोर्स इट गेट्स एलोंगेटेड स्ट्रेन इज डेवलप्ड स्ट्रेस इज डेवलप्ड when i will leave it it should come back to its original shape that is why it is called elastic so elasticity is the property to regain shape and size after external force is removed or after stress is removed okay the opposite of elasticity is called plasticity another definition of elasticity is the property to oppose a change in shape and size okay so i'm going to write it here o r or or property to oppose oppose change in shape and size so the material which is opposing the external force which has more restoring forces is more elastic okay for example a rubber band when i'm pulling it restoring forces are developed it is called elastic material okay property to oppose change in shape and size is called its elasticity plasticity is a uh, property to not oppose a change in shape and size opposite of this or property to not regain shape and size after removal of stress and external force for example clay if uh, if you take clay which uh, you apply external forces change its shape and size and then leave it it will not regain its original shape and size why because that is plastic okay so the best example of plastic material is clay so plasticity is opposite of elasticity uh, property to not regain shape and size after removal of stress or property to oppose uh not oppose change in shape and size is called plasticity so here uh, example is rubber rubber and here example is clay okay as i said second property a second way of uh, defining it will change the whole uh, understanding of elasticity we will see how steel is also elastic uh, quartz is also elastic all the metals are also elastic because they can oppose change in shape and size and here uh, clay and um, mud they cannot oppose change in shape and size they are not elastic okay they are plastic We will continue our discussion in next lecture. Thank you, everybody.